The chances of me liking an R-rated Seth Rogen comedy are usually pretty slim, but not impossible. Longshot stars Seth Rogen as a pompous blogger named Fred Flarsky, who falls for his childhood crush Charlotte Field, played by Charlize Theron, who is the current Secretary of State and is running for president. Charlotte hires Fred to be her speechwriter, and romantic sparks fly between them during her campaign. It had been a while since the last good laugh I had in the theaters, so as probably everyone going into this movie did, all I wanted was a good comedy. Not only did I get that, I got a good romance as well. Charlize Theron and Seth Rogen have excellent chemistry. For being on-screen and, I'm guessing, off-screen opposites, they go well together. Rogen pretty much does his shtick in this movie, while Theron is believable as a successful politician. The laughs come at a constant rate. One of the funniest parts involves a swastika tattoo that Fred gets at the beginning of the movie when he goes undercover with a gang of neo-Nazis that only gets half done before they find out that he's an investigative journalist. It turns into this running gag that I won't further explain, but it got some of the biggest laughs out of me. The majority of jokes hit their mark, though there are a few that don't land as well. There's a part where Fred and Charlotte get into a heated argument, but then Aurora lights appear and they stop to admire the view and they're like, Wow. It's so beautiful. Hey, I'm sorry about the way I spoke. I'm sure the intention there was to make fun of the cliché where people in an argument calm down when they see something beautiful, but there's nothing really added to the cliché that makes it discernible as a joke. It's like the movie thinks that because it's a comedy, the audience will just assume that it's parodying the cliché. I laughed at it initially, but when I let it sink in, I thought, eh, that really wasn't very clever. But it's only a select few jokes that are like that. This movie is very funny overall. As expected with a Seth Rogen comedy, there is an amount of crass, raunchy humor which I'm not a fan of, and most of it here I was very numb to. Though some of it kind of works when the movie takes a swing at opponents of a political campaign taking footage of the candidate's personal life and using it to derail their chances of victory. Indeed, the movie does have some clever commentary on aspects of political campaigns. There are these ridiculous charts with statistics of non-policy-related characteristics that Charlotte Field is told she must meet, which seem to satirize things that campaigns would do to appeal to uneducated voters. Now, at first I was uncertain of how I was going to feel about this movie's political mindset, because the main antagonist is a billionaire media tycoon named Parker Wembley. He's played by Andy Serkis in pretty convincing makeup that gives him the appearance of the most cartoonishly stereotypical, gross-looking, rich elderly man. There's a moment early in the movie when Fred confronts him, yelling, You're everything wrong with this country! You're a straight, white, rich man! I honestly couldn't tell if that was meant to be taken seriously or played for laughs. But as the movie went on, it became more apparent that that insane yet common generalization Fred makes was played for laughs, because Fred does have an arc. In the scene that really took me by surprise, Fred's best friend Lance reveals to him that he's both a Republican and a Christian, which he never directly expressed in front of Fred because of how impertinent he is toward people who lean right. I like that the movie didn't just throw that scene in for the sake of appeasing Christians and or conservatives in the audience. It plays a big role in Fred's arc. He feels bad that his friend has felt like he can't fully be himself around him. And he realizes that he's been so wrapped up in his own principles that he can't see eye to eye with other people. A revelation that also plays a big role in his relationship with Charlotte. What's more is that the character of Lance is played by O'Shea Jackson Jr., a black Republican. What a concept, eh, Hollywood? So while this is more of a liberal-leaning movie than anything else, I was still able to appreciate it for some chances that it takes like that. If there was any big eye-rolling moment for me, it would be a scene on this news network that is obviously satirizing Fox News because the headline bars have the same colors and font. The people on the show laugh at the notion of a woman being elected president, at which point I was like, Come on, no conservative news outlet actually thinks that a woman could never become president. Although there is another part with that show when they're commenting on this big climate change initiative that Charlotte is working on, and the headline reads, Secretary Field wastes her time. I'll admit, that's pretty funny. There are times when Fox News can be overly biased in the way that they phrase their headlines. So overall, I recommend this movie. It's basically the comedy version of Rob Reiner's The American President.
It's an enjoyable, good-natured political satire, and I gotta say, it's not a bad date movie. It's a far better one than After, although every love story this year is going to be a better one than After. Longshot hits its target with 70% accuracy. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this review helpful. Like and share. Subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop.